What's up guys, Houndish here, and today we have a huge roundup of info about Season 17 for Destiny 2. As always in the lead up to a new season, Bungie start out with a lot of technical details about gameplay changes. And we're going to break down everything we currently know about the new rewards. There are a bunch of new weapons, foundry updates and playlist loot changes. But additionally, Bungie have outlined adjustments to the crafting systems, new weapon stats, as well as weapon sandbox updates, exotic tuning and a bunch of other stuff. So we'll talk about it all in the video. This one has timestamps as well. So if you're looking for a specific section, you can jump ahead. And with that said, let's get into it. And starting out, of course, there is a question for Season 17 about what the story theme is likely to be. And based on lore and teasers inside of Witch Queen, of course, Rasputin and Anna Bray certainly have the possibility of being involved, as does Kallus, Keitel, and even Lord Saladin with his new role in the Cabal. Plus those Iron Banner changes coming up. It kind of opens up a bunch of different possibilities for the main story. So I'd love to get thoughts from you guys about that below. But getting on to some of the actual gameplay changes that we'll see in 17. Initially, we are going to see crafting adjustments. And Bungie had said specific elements such as Ruinous and Adroit Element have become redundant. And so instead of us keeping all of the crafting materials we currently have, Bungie are going to remove them all in Season 17 and only neutral elements will remain. So that will slightly simplify that crafting experience and at least remove some of the unwanted fluff around the materials. Also in relation to crafting, Bungie have said that they see a desire to masterwork crafted weapons. And starting in Season 17, we'll have the ability to achieve the masterwork to look for a crafted weapon. And to get the gold border on legendary crafted weapons, we need to have an enhanced intrinsic perk and two enhanced trait perks. But for crafted exotics, they will require a catalyst to be inserted. Really, it's a small cosmetic change, but if it's driving you insane having those weapons that don't have the yellow border, we'll finally be able to do that in Season 17. Of course, there are a bunch more weapon changes we'll touch on in a moment, but onto activity content, Bungie have revealed that we're going to see a raid and dungeon rotation. So they say one of the approaches for freshening up the raid and dungeon experience is by developing a new rotation of featured content, which will kick off in Season 17. And each season, the newly released raid and dungeon will grant pinnacle rewards for all encounters. So as an example, in Season 17, Vow of the Disciple and the upcoming Redacted Dungeon. But outside of these, we'll have a raid rotator and the dungeon rotator, each each offering a pinnacle reward once completed. On top of this, they've said that loot lockouts won't be a thing and we'll be able to farm those activities, including the encounters to our heart's content. So that'll be pretty interesting. And of course, with that dungeon drop in next season, Bungie have said that if you own the digital deluxe edition of Witch Queen, you get access to all four seasons over the year and the two dungeons. But for players who own the standard edition, it won't actually include dungeon access. So they'll be adding a separate way for players to purchase those in future. And so it isn't something that you necessarily get automatically as part of Season 17. Bear that in mind, and Bungie will give us more info soon. Also for activity content though, and on the PvP side, we're going to see that rework for the Iron Banner. We don't have a ton of details about what this will actually entail just yet, but Bungie have said that bounties for Iron Banner will be removed at the end of Season 16, as Saladin will take his turn in the rollout of Vendor Reworks. And so he's probably going to get a ranking system very similar to the other playlist vendors at the moment. Plus for the Crucible, Joe Blackburn had confirmed that in Season 17 we're going to see a brand new PvP map. Most likely in one of the environments that hasn't seen any maps yet, so that could include Throne World, but also Europa. And finally, they've also teased some adept reward changes for trials coming in Season 17, but this is something they plan to preview later on this season. Let me get more into the reward side of things. And initially, Bungie have said that we can expect to see new foundry weapons added each season, so no doubt we're going to see some in Season 17. Plus, they said that they'll be adding more origin traits to the game, so we should see one for the main Season 17 activity, another for the Season 17 dungeon, and then an origin trait for a seasonal event. This is on top of the fact that they have revealed some new weapons, so initially they've revealed the new Pursuit weapon for Season 17, which is a new machine gun called Chain of Command, and as always, it's going to come with three different ornaments. One for Crucible, Gambit, and another for Vanguard. Plus, Bungie have teased some new playlist weapons, so the Crucible will get the Riptide Fusion Rifle, Gambit, the Deadweight Shotgun, and the Vanguard will get the Strident Whistle Bow. And that's on top of the return of Horrors Least and the DFA, as a Nightfall weapon drops, including Adept Variants. Plus for Trials of Osiris, we'll see two new weapons, the Forgiveness Sidearm and a fusion rifle called Burden of Guilt. Plus they add that the Messenger Pulse Rifle and Sheora's Wrath will be leaving the Season 17 loot pool. On top of this, for weapons leaving loot pools at the start of Season 17, for the Iron Banner, the Occluded Finality Sniper Rifle and the Finite Impactor Hand Cannon will go away. In the Nightfalls, the Comedian Shotgun and Palindrome Hand Cannon will be taken out of the rotation. And that's on top of those two Trials weapons, Messenger and Sheora's Wrath. 
On top of this though, we can expect to see a bunch of other weapons revealed. There'll be stuff for the new activity, of course the dungeon, the season pass, plus exotic quests. And spoiler alert, but Bungie potentially accidentally revealed the return of the Trespasser from Destiny 1 via a Japanese version of the TWAB. And while it isn't confirmed, it does mean it's a possibility for Season 17, which is pretty interesting. Up next though, let's recap on sandbox and weapon tuning, and this is where there is a lot of conversation. Initially, we're going to see buffs to glaives. So in general for glaives, they're increasing the melee damage versus PvE enemies by 25%. They're also reducing the energy drain speed while shielding by 30%, and they're increasing the projectile speed dependent on the range stat. And higher range stats, as always, will increase that projectile speed. That's in addition to exotic glaive buffs, so the edge of action for Titans will now allow players to gain a void overshield while inside the bubble, and Helm of Saint 14 will also apply to the glaive's bubble. For the edge of intent for Warlocks, they've increased the speed and acceleration of the healing turret's projectiles. Then finally for the edge of concurrence, the Hunter Glaive, they've tripled the damage of the wave detonation and increased the number of enemies it can chain to from 4 to 8. So some potentially healthy changes right there for Glaives, we'll have to see how they turn out in game. On top of this, Bungie are adjusting Flinch in the game, so they say they've rebuilt the stability weapon stat to grant Flinch resistance in addition to its other effects, with a maximum Flinch resistance of 10 to 25% depending on the weapon archetype, which allows players to build into Flinch resistance on a weapon by essentially looking for a higher stability stat. On top of this, Bungie have added a new airborne effectiveness stat to weapons, and this is present on every weapon, with the exception of things like swords. They also say this stat has been hand-tuned on exotic weapons and everything shipped in Season 16 and 17. But they also point out that this will be a hidden stat at the launch of Season 17, similar to aim assist and recoil direction. But in Season 18, they plan to add all previously hidden stats to weapons. So with the airborne effectiveness stat, essentially it will increase accuracy for a weapon when you're firing it in the air. And then for weapons inside of playlists, for the Crucible, Vanguard and Gambit variants, Bungie say from Season 17 they'll have a chance to roll with extra traits in one or both columns, increasing with the number of rank resets on the vendor during a given season. So if you level up really high in the Vanguard, you'll get better chances to get those weapons with multiple traits, which of course can make them flexible but also increases the chance that you'll get the perks you want. But continuing on the subject of sandbox, Bungie say for one hit kills and special ammo inside of PvP, currently with Ariana's Vow or Lumonarch, players are able to get a lot of very easy one hit kills with external damage buffs like Empowering Rift. And so looking at that in PvP specifically, they say they've reduced the damage bonus for Empowering Rift, High Energy Fire and Inertia Override from 20% to 15% against players, but that won't affect PvE. Also, to reduce the amount of special ammo in the Crucible, they're disabling ammo scavenger mods. So they'll continue to work in PvE, but not in PvP. And then we get more into specific archetype tuning. So, firstly, once again, they point out that they're doing a lot of tuning around the in-air accuracy stat. But they go on to say that sniper rifles are fairly slow to ready, stow and aim down sights, which makes snapshot feel very mandatory. So in general, they're reducing the stow, ready and aim down sight times by 10% to make snapshot feel less like a requirement. Then with the popularity of slug and pellet shotguns in the Crucible, they say they're reducing the damage fall off start and end by 1 meter, as well as reducing aim assist and magnetism fall off by 2 meters. So they're going to be a bit less rangy and reliable. They're also essentially reducing the damage of fusion rifles quite a bit by reducing the damage fall off near distance as well as far distance and the recoil scalers for the weapons. To reduce the number of times that players could get 20 plus meter one hit kills with fusion rifles in Crucible. Then we have an overall buff for trace rifles, so they're increasing trace rifle damage against non-red bar combatants by 20%, and they're increasing the ammo picked up per special ammo brick from 18 to 30, so it's a reasonably healthy buff right there. They're also adjusting a bunch of primary weapon archetypes, so for auto rifles, they're increasing the damage fall off near distance by 0.75 meters. They're doing the same thing for pulse rifles based on the range stat, but they're also increasing lightweight pulse rifle damage per bullet from 15 to 16, which won't change the optimal time to kill for Crucible, but will reduce the number of crits required for a kill. For submachine guns, they're going to be reducing the variance in zoom across different weapons, and that's up from 13 to 14. They've also extended the damage fall off distance, and they say several standard zoom machine guns will be more competitive, but also reins in some of the stronger SMGs to be closer in line with the weapon archetype in general. They're also adjusting adaptive submachine guns, as they think they kill a little bit too fast with body shots, so they're decreasing body damage from 12 to 11.25, and increasing the precision multiplier from 1.35 to 1.44. 
so they will be more reliable with critical damage right there. And finally, for archetypes and heavy weapons, for machine guns, they're increasing the damage by 40% against PvE enemies and 20% versus buses, which will also affect some of the exotics in the game with the exception of bus damage. For swords, they also are going to be fixing several inconsistencies in stat displays between different sword archetypes. They're also increasing the charge rate of Solar Scar from 20 to 50 to match Temptation's hook. And then they're adjusting subfamilies for rocket launchers. So precision launchers will see minus 10% damage, both in impact and detonation. High impact launchers won't see a change, but aggressive and adaptive launchers will see plus 10% damage overall. Next though, we have buffs and changes to exotic weapons. So for Fighting Lion, they've said it needs a bit more of a buff, and they've reverted the Season 15 Breach Grenade Launcher Blast Radius Reduction, but just for the Fighting Lion, which increases its blast radius by 0.4 meters, and they're increasing its damage by 5%. Eyes of Tomorrow will see increased damage versus bosses and champions by 30%, which is a pretty good buff. And then we're seeing a rework to Leviathan's Breath, and the Archer's Tempo perk from the Catalyst now has an increased effect. So it'll get quicker draw time, but they've added a small delay before detonations on champions, mini bosses, and bosses, which allows the impact to stun an unstoppable champion and the detonation to deal bonus damage. They've also balanced the damage to be more of an even split between impact and detonation. So overall damage versus champions will be roughly doubled on that weapon. The Huckleberry will see increased zoom from 13 to 15. Then they're going to be increasing the rate of fire on the Xenophage. So it's going from 100 RPM to 120 RPM. They're also reducing the damage per bullet to match the previous, and it doesn't generally benefit from the Season 17 machine gun damage buff versus bosses. The Monarch, though, will see reduced poison tick damage versus players by 25%. They've also changed the damage type from burn to poison, and they're increasing the poison tick damage versus AI by 50%, so it's a decent buff for PvE. But Lorenz Driver has finally seen some changes, and they're reducing body shot damage against players by 20%, so it's a lot less likely to get body shot kills, and precision damage is unchanged in any mode. Then for Skyburner's Oath, they're making the weapon hit scan, so it's getting a few reworks here, and both ADS and Hipfire are now 150 RPM. The Hipfire projectile will no longer track, but it will arc similar to a grenade launcher and have a larger detonation size than ADS. Plus the Hipfire detonation will apply burn to targets, and the bonus range from the Masterwork has been rolled into the base stats of the weapon, and will now grant bonus reload speed instead. On top of that, they say it will have the highest airborne effectiveness stat of any weapon in the game. So that's pretty positive right there, but here, for some final quick exotic changes, for the last word, they've reduced mouse and keyboard recoil penalty from 33 to 22%. They're also reducing damage versus champions on the Arbalest by 25%. Then for the Graviton Lance, the Catalyst is being reworked and will no longer grant Hidden Hand, but instead will grant Vorpal Weapon and Turnabout. Then for the Grand Overture, they're reducing the time between bursts when in missile mode, and holding the trigger will now fire all missiles in a continuous burst, and tapping will fire five round bursts. But finally for Cold Heart, sustained damage with the weapon will create an ionic trace, and collecting it will grant energy to all abilities. They've also increased the grace time before the damage ramp clears from 0.113 seconds to 1 second. Then they say for Prometheus Lens, sustained damage will apply a more useful burn to targets. And finally for Wave Splitter, power level will no longer cycle randomly. The default damage output is the same as the old middle tier, but picking up an orb of power will now grant 10 seconds of maximum power and cap at 20 seconds up from 5 and 10. And in this mode, it will now suppress targets. They've also adjusted projectiles on the Osteo Striga. And then for Lord of Wolves, they're bringing it in line by reducing damage fall off start and end by 25%. So a whole series of changes right there for exotic weapons, a fairly significant sandbox update really, and let us know your thoughts below. The very final few changes that Bungie have told us about are for weapon perks specifically, so back to snapshot sites, they're increasing the ADS animation speed scaler from 0.5 to 0.75 for special ammo weapons, however primaries are unchanged. So essentially weapons will be a little bit less snappy with Snapshot than they've been up until now. They're also adjusting opening shot to make it feel less mandatory, and they've removed the damage fall off scaler, plus increased the range stat bonus from plus 20 to 25. And then for full choke, they're increasing the spread angle scaler from 0.95 to 0.9625, which narrows the spread a little bit less. So it's essentially going to be less appealing as an option. Then Smoothbore is going to see a buff, so they've reduced the spread angle scale from 1.1 to 1.075, so it widens the spread a bit less. 
And there's also that adjustment to the Desperado perk. So they're reducing how quickly the weapon fires when that perk is active, but they've reduced the duration from 7 to 6 seconds as well, but removed all PvE damage penalties. So it should be pretty good in PvE. And then with the airborne effectiveness stat being introduced, they're reintroducing the air assault perk and it grants up to plus 60 airborne effectiveness. For Mulligan, they've increased the chance to return ammo on a miss from 20 to 35% on primary ammo weapons. Then for Compulsive Reloader, they say it's shipped a little bit weak, so they've increased the reload stat buff from plus 40 to plus 50 and added a 095 times reload animation scalar. And then for Adagio on shotguns, they are reducing the damage bonus specifically for shotguns from 30 to 20%. So a bit of a nerf right there. Once again, a very significant sandbox update for season 17. So as always, give us any thoughts you have on the changes that they've announced or any things that you'd love to see. And for today, that summarizes everything we currently know about season 17. But as always, I will be keeping you posted. We're going to get more details over the next few weeks, which is why I thought it was worth doing this quick recap now, as we can fill in the gaps with details about the new content in the next month. So stay tuned here on the channel and I'll keep you up to date. But if you've enjoyed the video today, a rating below really does help us out. And as always, thank you very much for tuning in and showing your support, guys. For now, though, whatever you get up to, I hope you have an awesome day.